Hello and welcome to Animal Watch. And today we're talking about the really heartbreaking, horrific, sad disease called degenerative myelopathy, otherwise known as DM. I'm making this episode because sadly this week, my Czechoslovakian wolf dog, Mr. Blue, passed away from this terrible, terrible condition. Many of you will know it as the German Shepherd disease, a once common disease that would paralyze the rear legs of mainly German Shepherd lines, causing hundreds to be prematurely euthanized before living a full life. When Mr. Blue started to show symptoms, I was really shocked that there was hardly anything on YouTube about living and coping with this condition. Nothing documenting early symptoms and nothing showing advice towards the care and daily life living with a dog declining from this condition, right down to advising them to when it's the right time to let them go. So today, I bring you Animal Watch's full life to death guide on degenerative myelopathy and how to cope with it through the eyes of myself and my beautiful wolf dog, Blue. I really hope it will help others out there whose dogs are suffering from the same terrible disease. Degenerative myelopathy is a disease affecting the spinal cord, resulting in slowly progressive hind limb weakness and paralysis. Early clinical signs include what can be described as a drunken gait. The dog starts to sway his rear end while walking. As the disease progresses, he may start to drag the top part of his foot along the ground. As the spinal cord deteriorates, these symptoms worsen, eventually progressing to total paralysis of the hind end, meaning the dog is unable to stand up on his rear quarters anymore. The rear legs wither away. Eventually, if the dog stays alive long enough, the paralysis will work its way up into the upper body, finally affecting the dog's ability to even breathe. My Mr. Blue is a classic example of a dog suffering from severe DM. So how did we know it was DM? And how did dogs get it? DM is inherited. It cannot be caught like a bug. It is a genetic disease which can be passed on to puppies from the parent's DNA. It originates from unscreened breeding, where parents who have this gene are allowed to produce puppies. It became extremely common in German Shepherds before genetic testing was possible. And now the only way to prevent this condition is to not breed from parents who possess the gene. The puppies will only develop this condition if they inherit both sets of markers from each parent. And it's not guaranteed that every puppy will. So some will be luckier than others. Mr. Blue came from a litter belonging to a wolf dog associate who had not tested the puppies. The litter wasn't really planned and the parents were rehomed from a previous owner. I visited the puppies. Both the mum and puppies were healthy and happy. So I was not worried about accepting a male puppy from this litter. It was only a year later that I was contacted by the breeder who told me that they had done a DNA test on the parents only to find that both parents possessed the gene for DM and that probably many of the litter would go on to develop this disease as most would have inherited a set of DM genes from each parent. I researched it and found that the disease would start to show signs between four to 10 years generally. So I prepared myself for the worst. However, I was still optimistic that Blue may have not inherited both markers it was a waiting game. Mr. Blue was aged 10, almost bang on the nose, when we started to notice him start to sway a little on walks. I knew then that he had been unlucky to be one of the siblings to have started on this decline. In hindsight, though, he was one of the luckier ones, as three of his siblings had already died. One of bowel cancer aged three, one from aggressiveness who had to be euthanized, and the last one I was told simply dropped dead at age eight. 
Mr. Blue's wobble gradually progressed to the odd stumble and the odd drag of the feet as he walked. By now, we were certain it was DM, and my vet confirmed it by watching him walk. I wanted to try and prolong his quality of life for as long as possible, so I contacted various experts, one being a kind lady who helps with a charity online for disabled dogs called Jai Dog Rescue, and also hosts a famous website called Maggie the Wonder Dog. Casey not only adopts dogs with disabilities, but she fosters disabled rescues from abroad in the UK and gets them ready for their new homes as special case adoptions. Mr Blue was a little way off being paralysed from the waist down, but I wanted her advice in advance to what was to come. So he has um, partial paralysis, even with this dramatic break. Um, so he can feel his feet, can feel his toes. Oh, he can? He just wow. hasn't got very good movement with them. But yeah. we're building it up. So there's a potential he could walk again. No. Given time, lots yes. of hydro, lots of physio. Casey was on hand to show me how a DM paralysed dog can still live his best life for a while at least. Some people euthanise their DM dogs before they lose the use of their rear legs. I'm certainly not that type of person. I honestly think that if you have the time and the love for your dog, you should give them back the love that they've already given to you. Dogs are not disposable items and for sure you wouldn't put down one of your family members just because they became crippled. Casey had two disabled dogs with her, a beautiful white husky called Altai, who had been run down while running loose in Russia after being abandoned. His back was shattered, but he still lived a full and incredibly happy life. Unlike DM, this dog would not deteriorate further, so could exist in this disabled state for the duration of his life and be happily adopted into a home. The other dog was Lola, a Thai rescue who was found paralysed and presumed to have been run over by a kit or a moped breaking her back. Lola was semi-paralysed but still needed a wheelchair in the short term to walk and run. It was clear to see that a paralysed dog could live a full and happy life as long as their owner is willing to put in that extra care and effort. I sat down with Casey to talk about Mr Blue and what she thought about the short and long-term care of a DM dog. So you've got huge amounts of experience with DM, which yeah. is obviously what I'm dealing with with Blue right now. Yeah. Um, he's getting to the point now where he's going to need to go into a wheelchair. So typically I deal with dogs who come to me paralyzed. The first thing you always do is get them used to the chair inside where they're comfortable. Okay. So you do some training, you know, I've got some treats here. I would sit him next to the wheelchair, make a really positive association with the chair because it can be really scary if all of a sudden you're on a walk and there's this big thing. My experience has always been that they come around very quickly because if you've got the treats and you're mm -hmm. making a positive experience, they love it. With DM dogs, it is the back end that goes first. Hardwood floors are the worst for them. They need some thick rugs they can get their nails in and really pull themselves up. He's losing his confidence to go outside, so you have to encourage him to go outside because mm -hmm. he goes, if I stand up, I'm just going to smash into things. Mm -hmm. So he just looks at me now as if to go, I just really don't want to go outside. Yeah. And then suddenly he'll need to go to the loo, get panicky, and before yeah. you know it, there's something on the carpet. Yeah. Move door, his whatever. bed closer to the door, yeah. you know, helping him so it's not so scary because it is going to progress. You know it's going to progress and there's going to come a point where you're going to have to do that anyway. Mm. So start now changing his environment to best help him. With a DM dog, um, do you, have you found that they still pretty instinctive on how to go to the toilet? So when you get them into yeah. the garden, they pretty much go on their own. Or do you they find that you do. have to assist them? It, it, it progresses. So. At first, what you'll start to notice is, you know, they, they still have their routine, their habits, they'll stick to those. But as the disease progresses, they start to lose control. So you'll start to notice little dribbles on the bed and things like that. I, I tend to not really notice with the bowels because my dog's really regular. They go twice a day. I know when it's going to happen. But with uh, wee wees, I'll take them here. With wees, um, especially with male dogs, they're always the worst for it. Mm. They like to leave little dribbles. So I tend to... Um, Altai's off doing his own thing now. <laughs> I tend to use uh, belly bands for male dogs, which is a 
dog diaper specifically for males and you can okay. get disposable ones as Belly well band. as so it just goes over their front it bit. goes over over their back and round under to cover their man bit so with my paralyzed dogs and the dm dogs i've had i put them on a bathroom schedule you know your dog and you know yes. when they go to the toilet so you stick to that and just make it a and that's the time it, i go yeah um with wheeze anytime they're excited that's gonna so if you come Trigger home it, yeah take them out first thing in the morning first thing you should do take them out yeah. Don't wait to make your coffee, get your hair done, none of that. Mm. Take them straight Just out. Straight out. As the disease progresses, he's going to obviously become completely paralyzed on the rear end. Yeah. So and the painful ones. thing is the dog is still here in its mind. Yeah. Um, that's the thing that's so hard. Often when dogs get sick, they, they, you know, with cancer, they get more poorly and more poorly. And you know when it's time to let them go. When a dog still is fine in the head, and the body's not working yeah. anymore. It's a very So that's the thing though, isn't, thing, it? isn't it? You have to, because the mind is still there for as long as you are capable as a human to do so, you should assist your dog to, to live there. You know, Altai is in a wheelchair. Anytime you go out, he lives life to the fullest. If he were a DM dog, there comes a point where their mental health starts to deteriorate. Mm. And I personally look at that as, okay, now it's, now yeah, it's the time so they, well, they'll just about. get to a point where they, they look really depressed i mean you've noticed with be? blue haven't you where there's times where he's uncomfortable you well, know he gets scared yeah it, so it, it you will can... be he i'll try to get him to get up and he'll just look at me be, yeah. and say i don't want to get up because i know i'm going to fall down and i, yeah. I hate that feeling of me yeah. smashing down and looking like a bit of an idiot so that so. with your with your help that he'll overcome that mm. you know with your wheelchair and the, the safety measures you put into the house after that stage that initial oh my gosh i'm um, I can't walk stage that they go through they then move on to okay I'm enjoying the wheelchair I'm enjoying being out but then there will come another another hurdle where you'll go <laughs> okay now some of you start looking at yeah. it when a dog um, scrapes their feet or they stand on their toes it's called knuckling and there's some no knuckling socks which I have I use them for my paralyzed pups DM all kinds of dogs even cerebral hypoplasia I've used it for them attaches to their um, ankle and it's a little elasticated string that goes under their toes so it, when they take a step the string pulls their toes up so they can place their foot properly yeah. enrichment toys mm. they're so good because they start to lose so much so you have to compensate and find other ways to bring them that yeah. joy Casey had been extremely helpful and had shown me what to buy as Mr Blue's legs deteriorated she also showed me how to keep a paralyzed dog clean and happy in the house with female dogs, you can express them a multitude of ways. Their bladder is about here. Mm -hmm. So these are their rib cage, their hip bone, and in this cavity, that's where you'll find it. So what I tend to do is I put my hands under, wait out there, Lola, and I'll put their bladder between my right, fingers. Right, you'll actually find it, yeah. yeah. And then you squeeze, and I'll put my hand on the base of her bum. Yeah. So that I push the bladder, I squeeze it, and I push it into the back of my hand. Right, okay. The other Is way, it gonna come out at me? No, <laughs> it, <laughs> it won't, it won't go that far. I don't think she actually needs the whittles, but we will give it a go. Wait, Lola. Ready? Wee-wee's coming. Oh, look, there you go. That's it. Oh, that's quite a lot. Yeah, that's yeah. it, all done. And then for poops, mm -hmm. her hip bone is here. This is her tail, so there's the tail bones that go in there. And right here is this sort of empty space mm -hmm. where you can feel her. You can feel it when yeah. it's there, yeah. So she's got no poop. Oh, yes, she has. So ready? That's it. One, wow. two, three, four. That's it. All done. Many people presume that a paralyzed dog will mess everywhere. But with regular expressing of the bowel and bladder in combination with nappies will help keep your dog as clean as possible. Casey's advice to look at wheelchairs and foot covers to protect the dragging feet was also excellent advice. So I went home and immediately researched wheelchairs. I got in touch with an amazing dog wheelchair company called Wheels for Dogs, run by a lovely lady called Rebecca Neal. She was very knowledgeable and immediately sent me out a large sized wheelchair for dogs who are losing the use of their rear end. She also sent me carry straps for Blue so I could lift him up and help him around the house. Hi Mr Blue, it's Becky from Wheels for Dogs here. I've got some exciting news for you. We're getting your wheelchair ready to send out to you today. I know your back legs haven't been very good lately and this has been stopping you from playing in the garden and going out for walks. 
Hopefully this wheelchair will give you the freedom to enjoy doing these things again. And I know it would mean so much to Mummy if you could keep enjoying yourself for as long as possible. We're sending you a large frame with our largest 16 inch wheels in blue, of course, for Mr. Blue. Uh, Mommy can read the manual and watch lots of YouTube videos on how to get it all set up nicely for you. And we're also here to offer lots of help and advice if necessary. We help lots of dogs with degenerative myelopathy, particularly German Shepherds. In our experience, it's a good idea to introduce the wheelchair early when the rear legs are weakening, but still being used. Then as the condition deteriorates, the dog will be really used to the wheelchair and very confident in using it. We frequently hear back that wheelchairs introduced at the right time actually help to keep the dog's rear leg stronger for longer, meaning they get to keep enjoying life for longer than expected. I was told that at first, the wheelchair would just be a support for Blue while his rear legs were still functioning. But as he gradually lost the use of them, the legs could be tied up in straps to stop them dragging and injuring themselves on the ground. I went online and purchased some anti-scrape booties for his rear feet. I took the wheelchair for a test run and it was amazing to see how happy Mr. Blue was with his newfound freedom. Big smiles all around. Now as time went on, Mr. Blue's paralysis progressed. His wobble turned into falling down and eventually he couldn't use his rear legs at all. The wheelchair worked well while on a walk, but was impractical in the house due to its size not being able to fit through doors. So Mr. Blue would drag his rear end around the house and we would use a male dog diaper on him for accidents as he gradually lost control over his bladder and bowel. It was harder for us than many other small dog owners due to Blue's size. He was a giant sized breed and weighed around 45 kilograms before he became paralyzed. Carrying him and putting him into cars and onto the wheelchair was a feat indeed. Also helping him in and out of the house so he could spend time outside was sometimes impossible for me to do alone. Some people recommend slider bags for dogs so they don't harm themselves while dragging their rear quarters around. Here are some examples. It was bittersweet to see Mr. Blue play with my son Kai up the garden. Kai would carry his legs and allow Blue to run around the garden on his front paws. The downside to using a wheelchair in a garden like ours is that Blue could tip himself over on the hills. So wheelchairs are okay to use, but only under full supervision. I had a paralyzed Alaska Malamute a few years back who fell down my waterfall while outside. So you must be super vigilant with a disabled dog at all times. Now another great tip for a paralyzed dog is a raw protein diet, as feeding 100% raw makes the poo small and hard, non-smelly and non-runny. We fed Blue on Paleo Ridge, which is a UK raw dog food company. The results were outstanding and it was so easy to collect any accidental poops as they were so compact and hard. I used raw food when my Tamascan had colitis too and it cured her condition. If you would like to find out more about Paleo Ridge, then I will put a click through at the top of my page. It was unbelievable how long Mr. Blue survived and coped for. From when he started to show symptoms, he managed to live for another 18 months, which is way beyond what many people allow. I guess it was because we are great dog lovers and my family members all had jobs, which meant they could work from home and care for Blue around the clock. He was never in pain and always happy, but after 18 months with this condition, he decided to not use his upper body anymore and started to lie in a corner, not moving, ever. We would bathe him and change his diapers. He would eat eagerly, but lost the strength in his upper body to use the wheelchair. 
His back legs had withered away into nothing. Then the whining started, not out of pain, but out of frustration. He couldn't play, he couldn't follow us around, and he couldn't go outside. He lost interest in his toys, unless we sat with him and really coerced him into playing with them. He still often picked up his favourite, his squeaking pig. So it was decided to give Mr Blue one last Christmas and to fuss him no end during this time. Come on, Blue, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, Blue. Yeah, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Get it. Get it. Yeah. The last thing we wanted was Blue's disease to start to stop him breathing properly, as this would have been very selfish of us. So we made the decision to ask the vet over a couple of weeks after Christmas to send him off with dignity and without pain. I kissed him one last time. God, I love that dog so much. He never had a bad bone in his body. I cursed all the breeders who don't test for this condition and instead breed for money, as this is why this disease never gets eliminated. Ironically, his mum, who is age 15, had survived getting DM. Her having only one set of markers, and she still unbelievably lives on now, outliving many of her puppies. My husband and my children sat with him as the vet came. I had to sit in my car, as losing so many dogs now had started to scar me psychologically. After losing my last dog, Kiyoshi, I still hadn't recovered from this and wasn't ready to see my beautiful boy's large eyes close for the last time. I was told that it was peaceful and he simply went to sleep. I felt terribly guilty afterwards. I'm actually anti-euthanasia of anything, human, animal, and I don't eat animals. I'm just taking the life from any animal it's really, really, really upsets me. I'd be interested to know what other people have been feeling that have gone through the same things as me. Do you feel guilt? Are you sort of toying with the idea when people say it's the best thing for the dog? Or is it really the best thing for the dog? Because they can't speak, can they? They can't tell you whether they want to stay or not. I drove Mr Blue to my beautiful local dog crematorium that looks after all of my dogs. And a few days later, I laid Mr. Blue out for my family to say goodbye one last time. Finally, he went on his last journey. Cedar Lodge did an amazing, dignified job. Now Mr. Blue is home with me forever, along with the others who passed before him. I keep all of the ashes, as when I pass, I will have all of my dogs put inside the coffin with me. This episode was extremely hard for me to make, but I did it so I could offer some advice and help to other people out there who have dogs that are going through the same thing that I went through with Mr. Blue. Please feel free to leave me any questions in the forum below and I'll do my best to read them and answer them the best I can. If you would like more advice or help with Dog DM, or you would like to adopt a disabled dog, then please get hold of Casey at Maggie the Wonder Dog here on Instagram. If you're thinking of purchasing a wheelchair, please contact Becky from Wheels for Dogs here. And if you live in the UK and want to feed a healthy raw diet, then please visit Paleo Ridge. I'll finish with a few clips of where Mr. Blue met his sibling, Mr. Red, 
after many years apart. And when I dropped in to be reunited with Blue's mum and his brother, Mr Black. <laughs> 